Well, that's why it's called Mario Kart 8, because we had to wait eight years for new courses. All right, guys, here we are playing the Mario Kart 8 Deluxe Booster Pass stages. I believe this one is Toad Circuit. I see that Nintendo took some inspiration from the recent success of Elden Ring and made it open world. Very bold design decision. Uh, I wonder where Lakitu is. Oh, I was playing the wrong game? I couldn't tell. I was planning on reviewing all the Booster Pass courses in a single video in two years, but after playing the first ones this weekend, I'm, I'm not waiting two years to talk about this. And I'm gonna preface everything by saying, hey, at the end of the day, it's still Mario Kart. A bunch of us played the Wave 1 DLC together last weekend, and it was a ton of fun. I think adding these courses and future courses are a net positive. That being said, these courses are... Uh, well, they get my official seal of... not terrible? They feel like a really good Mario Kart mod, not an officially released product. Like if an independent external person ported these tracks into Mario Kart 8, I'd be like, wow, this looks really good. But as something officially released, it's... Uh... The graphical downgrade is immediately noticeable with the foliage in the game. Look, I'm not one of those video game grass enthusiasts, all right? I'm not someone who complains about minuscule features in a video game not being hyper-realistic and not having a thousand lines of code for every individual blade of grass. If I want to see grass, come on, I touch grass every day while picking up my dog's dookie. But it's kind of like the tree in Pokemon Shield's wild area. Does the tree look like shit? Yes. Does the tree looking like shit affect my enjoyment of the game? No. But for many players, every time they see the tree they go Ugh! which when you're making a video game is generally a feeling you want to avoid when the player looks at one of your art assets and i've never seen a game do this release extra content that's clearly of a lower quality and jarringly doesn't match the rest of the game maps that would have been developed upwards of 10 years ago you don't see this in the 3ds smash ultimate stages you know that being said it is a good price about 52 cents per course and it definitely looks like it too people are saying that oh they're originally gonna make mario kart Part 9, but 8 Deluxe kept selling, so they decided to port these over instead. So while we're in the realm of baseless conjecture, here's what I think happened. Hey man, we got Switch Plus coming out. We gotta come up with some bonus content to sell these expansion passes. Uh, how about we give away some bonus courses in Mario Kart? Just bring them over from the mobile game. People would get really mad about more Mario Kart content being locked behind Switch Plus memberships. So we'll also sell it separately, and if almost everyone buys it, we'll make upwards of a billion dollars off of it. These courses being planned as bonus content for Switch Plus owners makes a lot more sense than these being planned as true DLC. But that's enough rambling, now to the courses themselves. I'll be using the exact same rating system as last time where each course will get a score out of 5 in each area. Here we go, Golden Mushroom Co. Wait, Golden Dash? Is that the name of that item? I've been calling it a Golden Mushroom my whole life, and I'm gonna keep doing that. Paris Promenade from Mario Kart Tour. This is my favorite course in Wave 1. It's really cool how you go backwards on lap 3. It reminds me of Luigi Circuit from Double Dash, where you'll have other racers going the opposite direction on the same road if you're fast enough. Or slow enough. It's a really wide course. I've never been to Paris because it is fictional. You can tell by the weirdly large proportions of objects on the side. But I assume it would look exactly like this. Except I thought there'd maybe be more baguettes. But overall, this course is pretty good. You know, I was a little worried about the quality of the DLC courses, but after first playing Paris Promenade, I was like, oh, this one's pretty alright. Maybe these courses won't be so bad. Those fears quickly returned as soon as I played Toad Circuit 3DS. With the Mario Kart 8 Deluxe Booster Course Expansion Pass, we're excited to bring back fan favorite courses such as... No, no, no. This one? This is pretty universally regarded as the worst one, even though there's plenty of other highly detailed graphics and curb assets from other courses in the game that this course could call from. I like how instead they just used the fill tool and called it a day. The first course in each Mario Kart game is usually a pretty basic course. So if you have over 100 courses to choose from, why the frack would you pick this one? I played Mario Kart 7 on 3DS and I forgot this course existed. Nobody wanted it. This is no one's favorite course. It's nothing. The only distinguishing feature from it is Big Toad. Choco Mountain N64. This is an iconic map mostly because of how broken the original is and how you can get screwed if you fall off. None of those parts are here, so as a result, it's a very basic course. I guess between games they added guard rails because of whatever the mountain equivalent of OSHA is. And I'm convinced that the ladder at the start is a sly reference to the Weather Tenko skip. 
It's been over a decade since I last played it in the DS one, so I could be misremembering, but this course seems slightly shrunk down? I can really tell by the lake you go around towards the end, it just feels smaller than I remember. Visually, this chocolate mountain isn't much, and this is coming from a chocolate man who's a chocolate fan. But how much can you really do with chocolate rocks, you know? Once again, another dessert course that's not all that great. Wait, I don't even think they're made of chocolate. I think they're just regular rocks. Man, that's some boo. Coconut mall, we take that saturation slider and crank that shit all the way up. It feels like I'm staring to the sun during an acid trip. Mario Kart Wii, a game I do not like, has this weird washed out look to it. So maybe this is what the course looks like with the washed out effect removed? I'm not sure if this course is smaller or if Mario Kart is just faster or if I just don't remember correctly. But once again, it feels like the course is shrunk down by like 5 to 10% from the original, which doesn't sound like much, but you can feel the difference. The <laughs> shitty level design of Mario Kart Wii is on full display here and extra exacerbated. So many jumps you make you just slam into a wall. These horrible turns look sloped like a half pipe and would probably make for good anti-grav sections, but instead you just bonk into an invisible curb. I might be the only player who actually likes the change to the stairwells. In the Wii version, I had to squint to see which one is in which direction due to the low resolution. Mr. Spaceman, just memorize it. No, the cars at the end don't even move anymore, so there's barely even any obstacles now. You used to see your me's from your game console in the cars, but now they're replaced with shy guys? That's so much lamer. If you're not getting railed by President Obama, can it even be called Mario Kart anymore? Nintendo quietly swept Miis under the rug, but now they're gradually bringing them back, but maybe not? Make up your mind. But yeah, Coconut Mall is okay. Next up is the Lucky Cat Cup. Who comes up with these names, man? Tokyo Blur from Mario Kart Tour. It's cool that it's different paths each time, but still with some overlap. However, these these paths don't add anything visually. The final lap is a parking garage ramp and that's it. Both visually and gameplay wise, compared to Paris Promenade, this definitely feels like a course specifically designed for a mobile game. And not that this affects your enjoyment of the race at all, but the skybox is terrible. It's two colors, which is fine for a mobile game on a small screen, but not good for a 50, 60, 70 inch TV, you know? It's still a brand new course for me, since I played Mario Kart Tour for all of 10 minutes and stopped. because. Gotcha games are always bad. You have to pay extra money for a chance to unlock Mario in Mario Kart? Diddy Kong is $40! Shroom Ridge DS. I love all the blind turns on this map. It's almost as if this course was designed with an overhead map on the bottom screen in mind. However, the blind turns aren't that big of a deal since, unlike the original, all the cars are going the same direction, unlike how a normal road works. It'd be cool if they reverse direction in mirror mode, but they don't. It has some pretty good drifting on higher speeds, but it's a pretty forgettable course otherwise. Not much to say about it. Sky Garden GBA. This course also feels very wide. I don't know, these lanes just feel very wide. Plenty of room to dodge and swerve, which makes bananas less potent. Now, I don't like the sound of my banana getting less potent. I have at least a few more decades before that happens, right? Oh, right, the course. I haven't been talking about it since there isn't much to say. It was one of the best ones from the GBA Mario Kart, but it didn't really get upgraded enough to continue to stand out in this one. Courses like Ribbon Road and GBA Mario Circuit are great examples of simple shapes that still fit the art style of the game, unlike Sky Garden here. And the music is okay, but kind of repetitive. Ninja Hideaway from Mario Kart Tour, I think? You either love this course or you hate this course, and there's no in between. I do not like this course. For the visual design, they were just like, hey, uh, what color palette should we use? Yes! Having many bright colors like this on a smaller device, like a phone or tablet, which is what this course was originally designed for, makes sense because the colors will pop. It helps with visibility. Here, while playing on a TV or monitor, it's an assault on the eyes. But in this course, you're going through a ninja palace, which is pretty cool. I like how there's multiple stacked paths. You can take a different route every time. There's a cool shortcut you can use if you take out the signs or boost through them. But there's too many 90 degree ass right angle turns, especially after a trick. And if you take the top path, I'm always bonking my head on that one jump. Oh, 
I feel like alternating parallel paths would have been better. One goes up while the other goes down, so you have to choose a path and time it well, as opposed to what's actually in the game, which is you either get it or you don't. Too bad. And there's ninja shy guys that appear sometimes? I thought they were gonna throw a shuriken or a kunai at me, but instead they apparently just poof into bananas. And why pick shy guys to be the ninjas? Man, if only Nintendo had a Mario character that looks like a ninja that could do ninja stuff on the ninja stage. If only. The music has a cool bass line partway through, which I of course really like, but some of the rest of it sounds like Friday Night Funkin' music. And as someone over the age of 15, I do not mean that as a compliment. These courses might grow on me over time, however, as they are now, I would not say that this is their best first impression for this pass. But if you look at Mushroom Cup in the base game, I wouldn't call those courses the best in the game either. There are still 40 more courses to look forward to, and it's possible that they'll update with Wave 1 courses with a texture pack or something, but knowing Nintendo, I doubt it. There's currently a lot of spectacle over the fact that there are new courses, but that spectacle won't last forever, and we're going to have these courses in perpetuity. I don't know about y'all, but I'll probably be playing my Switch probably for the rest of my life, or at least until there's a Switch 2. And while having more courses is good, it's still slightly disappointing to have a slew of courses that don't feel like they're good, they feel like they're good enough. Unlike the older courses that looked like they had a lot of passion behind each design, instead here it feels like, yeah, we can release these. Wreck it! But Mario Kart is still fun, especially with friends, and that's the most important part. You can enjoy the game, but still think that these courses should look a little bit better. Both things can be true. Thanks for watching, and if you haven't already, don't forget to aim your green shell into that subscribe button. This was just my opinion on the Wave 1 DLC courses. Comment below with your own opinion on them. Are they great? Are they terrible? Are they just okay? Let me know. And uh, that's it, video's over.